Yo yo, what's up bros, my name is Nodby and I want to tell the new people here know that I post daily recaps every single day Yeah yo, we on that daily grind boys, subscribe now to become a bro today Comment something down below because I answered all the comments and enjoy the video The story starts with a young boy kneeling in a room surrounded by stacked books Thinking to himself, bookworm, that is what people call me In the next scene he opens a book lying on the floor and starts reading it Not caring how his friends and people are calling him and actually agreeing with the fact that he indeed is a bookworm. I love to read, he thinks to himself, holding a book close to his face and passionately reading it. He thinks of all of the different genres of books, adventure, fantasy, romance, science fiction, and realizes that he is a reading addict and the genre doesn't matter to him. He just likes to read and be deeply absorbed into reading each and every book he puts his hands on. The next scene shows a classroom full of students having conversations about something called Panji and its release date, and whether they watched the video of it or not. Are you still reading? Hey! Yells a classmate whose name is Kim Yen Jung and he's yelling at our bookworm whose name is Kang So Hyuk, who with a smile on his face was reading a book at his desk. Putting his hand on Kang's shoulder to draw his attention, Kim said that the school is over and it's time to go home. Kim and Kang have been in the same class for 8 years. With a mesmerizing look on his face, Kang placed his hand on Kim's hand and said, let's stop by the library first. Kim got surprised and a little bit scared hearing Kang's suggestion and quickly backed his hand from Kang's shoulder, telling him that he reads all day and asks him whether he gets tired at all. Nope, Kang answered happily. Come on, let's go to the library, Kang continued as he already started walking out of the classroom. As they walked down the hall, Kim started talking about the Panji and Kang showed interest, asking what Panji is. Kim explained that this is a new virtual reality game that is being released this year. He also said that there is a library in the game and asked Kang if he would like to try playing it. There is a library in every video game. What's so interesting about this one? Kang asked. Kim swiftly put his smartphone next to Kang's face and showed him a video of the game saying that they made physical looking copies of the books in game. Kang's eyes opened widely as if he thought about something very important. Aren't you interested? Kim asked. I found a way to solve my problem, Kang thought. This problem being how he wants to read many 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 books but he can't afford to read them all but probably in the virtual reality he will be able to afford them. He ran away home whistling a song looking quite happy. He entered his house and quickly sat in front of his computer, made a few clicks and there it was. Panji Grand Open, December 31st. There's two months until it's opened. What are the specifications? Kang said, showing great interest in the new Panji game. It's been five years since I got my capsule, he said, deeply in thought, thinking how it lasts long, but it's not worth the price, and that he would have to save pocket money to buy real books. So he thought about asking mom and dad for it. His parents actually were very very happy that he decided to play the games, because they think he should act more like a kid and they eagerly gave him their credit card saying he could use all of the money they have because they would do anything just for Kang to start behaving like other kids his age and not just read books the whole time. Imagine having this problem. Just sit there for a moment and imagine having this problem. That your parents don't want you to read as much. Now back to the story, he bought the game using his parents money. Fast forward at December 31st midnight, Kang put his helmet on and sat in the capsule. He was a little bit afraid at first and the game started connecting them. A beam like light appeared and just like that he accessed the game. Visibly confused, Ken was standing on a meadow while the wind blew and Kang thought it's amazing that he can feel it. Please go to the building in front of you. An instruction appeared out of nowhere. This wasn't here before he thought as a wooden house stood in front of him like it suddenly appeared out of nowhere. There was also a blue line on the floor as an indicator where he should go. He entered the house and there was a spotlight in the middle of the room as if he was supposed to go and stand there. A message appeared saying that he can create a new character, give your character name. Then he proceeded choosing his appearance, seeing himself under that spotlight as if he is seeing a hologram. He saw a default in-game outfit and thought that even though changes are available, it would take too long to choose what he liked. 
He adjusted the age of the character and the message appeared saying that the character had been created. Kang touched the character and then he felt some kind of a sensation in his body like something is about to happen. Sun Hyuk connected to the game and appeared in what seems to be a medieval city. There were many characters walking in the street, males and females wearing different outfits. He thought to himself how graphics look realistic and then a small parchment appeared in front of him saying Find Helper Kazan, Central Square, offering a 1 gold reward for completing the task. Sun Hyuk realized that the square is a quest, but he was more interested about finding that library that his friend Kim talked about. In search of the library, he walked to the square and saw a line of people waiting for something and since he was already there, he thought he could complete the quest. Next, Helper Kazan yelled and Son Hyuk approached him, greeting him and saying hello. Welcome to Orin, I'll give you a guidebook, Helper Kazan said, telling Son Hyuk that it will help him in his adventure. A message saying quest, guidebook has been created, appeared as Son Hyuk finished the quest. Goodbye, next, said Kazan and Son Hyuk looked at the book Kazan gave him in great admiration, thinking to himself that this was a good quest because he got a book. Sun Hyuk remembered something and returned to Kazak asking him where the location of the library is and Kazak told him to refer to the guidebook for library locations and that access to the library is available for purchase of 50 gold at the library. Shocked, Sun Hyuk thought that 50 gold sounds like a large amount of money and thought whether he should start making money in this game. He sat at the bench and opened a book. Then a message appeared saying that he completed the quest to open a guidebook. He took a look at the guidebook and found the library's location. San Hyuk read the guidebook and learned about strength, agility, stamina and wisdom. As he finished reading it, he closed the book and became determined to collect 50 gold needed for the access to a library. I wanna read it already, this is too much, said Son Hyuk disappointedly. He walked up to the library and looked at it with awe. He realized that compared to the school library, this one is huge. His heart started pounding and he grabbed his shirt as if he was getting out of breath just thinking about all of the books inside this library. He kept looking at the library badly, wanting to get in but he only had 15 gold and the library pass cost 50 gold. Hunger has fallen below 50%. A message suddenly appeared and he felt surprised at how quickly his character became hungry. Son Hyuk checked the guidebook and it said that when hunger reaches 0%, all stats are reduced by 50%. And when hunger reaches minus 50%, you die. And in case of death, you are back to level 1. There is a reduction of random number of stats from 1 to 3. And also, as a penalty, you won't be able to log in for a day. Imagine if the games today had this as a penalty when you die. That would be crazy. Now back to story. He realized that he would basically die if he spent all of his time just reading books. So he decided to find a piece of plain bread and he eats it. But also he knew that he can't survive on bread only and that he needed to spend more points on stamina. As soon as he took a bite he realized that the bread is as hard as a stone. Son Hyuk joined the North Training Center and started learning the basics on how to fight. The quest required him to destroy the scarecrow in the center of the training field and the quest reward was 2 gold, crude leather armor top made of rabbit skin. Son Hyuk thought that the sword was more like a stick since he's done no damage to the scarecrow despite hitting it multiple times. What is this he thought as he felt a slight change in his handling of the sword. Swoosh. Son Hyuk hit the scarecrow with a critical strike and his agility increased by one and he also destroyed his first scarecrow. Then he destroyed another one but this time his agility did not increase and he wondered why. Son Hyuk ran to the trainer and reported that he destroyed two scarecrows but the trainer immediately requested him to catch five rabbits and bring him three leather. The reward for the completion of this quest would grant him a pair of shoes made of rabbit skin. Son Hyuk went outside the village in search for rabbits and saw many other characters doing the same thing, farming rabbits, swinging their swords while trying to catch them. Son Hyuk thought that there were too many people here and decided to go somewhere else. He walked into another place and put on his crude leather armor top for safety measures. 
He hit the first rabbit, but the rabbit did not die. Sonhyu looked at him and thought he is very cute and wondered if he really had to kill him. The graphics are too good, he thought. Then he started convincing himself that this is just a game and he just has to complete this quest. Sonhyu completed the quest, killing 5 rabbits and gathering 4 rabbit leather. Proudly going back to the city, he wondered how much money he could get for selling the extra rabbit leather. He reported the mission and realized that the mission could not be auto-completed and he had to engage into the dialogue. As a reward, Son Hyuk received his pair of shoes made of rabbit leather. The NPC character told Son Hyuk that the auto-completion function is still work in progress and the rewards can be received at specific NPCs. The NPC also said that the relationship with an NPC is important and it could be beneficial for the character. Son Hyuk thanked the NPC and the NPC smiled. Then, as Son Hyuk was about to take the rabbit shoes, instead of the shoes, a brand new sword appeared in his hands, one that is better than a training sword. Son Hyuk realized that the reward probably changed because of his good attitude towards the NPC and thought that the sword would be very useful for future quests. The NPC then told him to go to the central square and find Kodra. Son Hyuk decided to finish all the quests in Oren before he moved to another town. He realized that when he leaves Oren he won't be able to come back and visit the library, so maybe there is a book that only Oren's library might have. The thought of that angered Son Hyuk, so he decided to collect more gold and get the library pass. Son Hyuk entered a shop and tried selling the extra rabbit leather he had. The lady in the shop told him he could get 1 gold for 4 pieces of leather and Son Hyuk realized he needed 132 leathers for his access to the library. Son Hyuk went on in hope to collect all 132 leathers and finally entered the library. Now we can see some people who seem to be the developers of a game discussing the progress of players playing the Panji game. They're talking about players' achievements and whether anyone accessed the library yet. You see the two game developers continue talking about the game as the second one comments how it's almost impossible for players to enter in the library on the first day of the game because the fee is so high it's really really difficult to earn it in a single day. They continue talking about how they will develop the game in the future when they notice a player with a first class job has already appeared. They both get surprised by this and see that this person is working in the Devil's Palace, but comment how it still should be impossible for players to reach these jobs in a first day, thinking maybe he's a hacker, but one of the devs comments how the requirements for this job have been lowered so it's possible to achieve it in a day now, but how they should keep an eye on this just in case. Now we go back to our protagonist who is still hunting rabbits in order to gather their hides and after the endless grind and getting 132 leather hides he's finally done. He leveled up all the way to level 8 while doing this and has also gotten the title Orange Massacre because he killed over 100 rabbits in the area around Oren. Now he goes back to the shop and is talking to the NPC clerk once again as he presents her with all the leather he has gathered. Players around him are admiring how many rabbits he killed, while the NPC merchant lady offers him 35 gold for 132 leather hides. He gets a bit confused saying that he's receiving 2 gold more than actually needed and the NPC comments saying how this is a bonus because he has brought so much leather in a bulk. He thanks the NPC lady while being happy because he finally has 52 gold and can go to the library because he even has 2 gold more than needed. But just then he gets a message saying his hunger is dropping, so he decides to go buy some bread for the extra 2 gold that he has. He sees many delicious pastries, but since he can't afford to buy them, he buys plain bread which is really cheap, so he gets 10 pieces of plain bread for 1 gold coin. As he's walking to the library, another player stops him and asks him why did he buy plain bread, to which Kim answers by saying that he is hungry, so then the other player decides to help Kim and give him some food because this bread doesn't look delicious at all. 
Suddenly, everyone around rushes towards Kim, saying how they will give him a bit of the food they have as well. He gets so much bread now that he gets confused because he doesn't understand why did they give him so much. So he thinks to himself that maybe he looks really pitiful and that's why they're donating bread to him. He looks at his inventory and sees that he has 112 plain bread pieces and 6 soft bread pieces and thinks to himself how he can last long on this much bread. But now finally it's time for Kim to go to the library. As he enters the library and gets mesmerized by how many books there are all around him, another character suddenly appears behind him asking if Kim has a library pass and this scares Kim. He answers that he doesn't have it but would like to buy one now, so he buys it and uses it right away in order to gain access to the library. As he's standing in front of all these books, he wonders, hmm, why do they all look so shiny? He noticed that some books were shiny and some were not, guessing that the shiny ones might be the ones he hasn't read. Son Hyuk took one book and opened it. The book contained the travel log of one of the characters named Arturk. The first page was about Arturk meeting new friends, two men and a woman. Later he meets a fourth woman and all of them fight orcs. His friend Hardas makes a mistake and Carol, the second woman he met almost dies because of the incident. Carol leaves the group. The remaining group gathers and Hardus tells about ancient wizard's dungeon that might be too dangerous to explore. A week later they find a dungeon but Arturk feels that Hardus, Yuris and Temel are nervous thinking about entering the dungeon. Two weeks later they enter the dungeon and Yuris gets injured by a trap but Hardus uses his potion to heal her. A few days later, Arturk wanted to leave the dungeon but everyone else refused. Hardus tells him to go back alone if he wants and Arturk starts feeling that Hardus changed and became cold. Two days later, Arturk finds out that he and his group members actually met before and wonders why they acted like they met for the first time. Five days pass by and they finally see the end of the dungeon, but Arturk's group's members betray him and he dies four days later in a mysterious way, probably being poisoned. Arturk's last words were, I met the devil. Son Hyuk finished reading the log and closed the book, increasing his wisdom skill by one. The book stops shining and Son Hyuk wonders if his skill can increase again if he reads the same book again. So the answer was no so he decided to read another book. As the story progresses, we can see a female character with blonde hair doing the scarecrow's quest with a sword that looks much better than Son Hyuk's sword and destroys the scarecrow in just one hit. Suddenly, a girl that seemed to be her friend calls her by her name, Gia, and asks her if she's done and Gia confirms that she is done. The ladies were proud and high-fived each other and then immediately asked the NPC to give them what he promised. He gave them the certificate and hoped the ladies would get along well wherever they go. Gia's friend wondered if there's something in the library and Gia said that there must be something good since the entrance costs 50 gold but Gia had only 37 gold. Gia's friend decided to give her 20 golds to get the library pass. Gia walked up to the library and wondered if it contained something more special than a trainer. She traded the 50 golds for a library pass, entered the library and saw many shiny books. She walked up to Son Hyuk thinking he was an NPC and there is no way he was a user. She comes closer to Son Hyuk and asks him if he is a user to which he says yes. She was a bit surprised realizing she's not the only one thinking about the library. She walks to the bookshelves and runs her fingers on the books as she suddenly sees a book that seemed to be special. She takes the book from the bookshelf and realizes it's just a guidebook. Just as Son Hyuk, she wonders what the shiny books were about and finds out they are travel logs. She reads the travel logs quickly and gains her wisdom skill increased by one too, just like Son Hyuk. She also realizes that the sparkles disappear as soon as she reads the book and wonders if that's all about the library, just shiny books and nothing else. She thinks to herself that she doesn't need that much wisdom and hunting would be more efficient for her. 
Gia messages her friend Leah and asks her what is she supposed to do in the library. Leah surprises Gia by asking her whether the books in the library are shiny and tells her that an NPC that promotes the library gave her a shiny book and that's why she thought all the books in the library were shiny as well. Gia decides to leave the library but before she does she takes a look at Son Hyuk and thinks that maybe he doesn't know that stats can go up in other places too. Excuse me, she says touching Son Hyuk's shoulder. He turns his head and looks at her as she tries to explain that the library is not the only place where wisdom skill can go up. Son Hyuk looks at her without saying anything and both of them just stood there in weird silence as they both found each other to be awkward. Now Jia asks him directly if he knew that he only needed to read a book and it didn't have to be a library. Son Hyuk says that he knew and Jia, rather confused, asks him why is he still in the library and Son Hyuk says that he is just reading. Jia then asks him if he is reading just to get stats and Son Hyuk says nope. He goes back to reading his book and Jia starts thinking that he is a weird person as he slowly walks away. Soon enough Son Hyuk finishes reading another book and looks left and right as if he is searching for something. Where did she go? He thinks to himself. Now in the next scene we learn that Son Hyuk graduated from high school and we see him asking his friend Kim if he loves the Penji game and Kim says that he feels he's missing something and asks Son Hyuk the same question. Song Hyuk says he misses the library. They walk to a restaurant and order jampong and some dumplings. Kim asks Son Hyuk at what stage in the panji he is now and as soon as Son Hyuk said he was still in the library, Kim said that he's been there for over a month already. Son Hyuk tells him that he hasn't finished all the books yet and Kim asks him why is he reading everything. Son Hyuk said it's a requirement to go to the magic tower. Kim asks him if he wants to become a wizard and tells him that going to the kingdom would be better since NPCs at the tower are terrible. Son Hyuk said he doesn't care and that he's only going for the library and proceeds eating his food. Kim looks at him in disbelief and tells him that he only reads books and that he actually never really started playing the game. Yep, Son Hyuk said and Kim said he gives up trying to think that Son Hyuk would do anything else besides reading books. Then again, he asks him if he is really only going to read and Son Hyuk says that he will also hunt and do quests. Kim rejoiced and called himself a semi-ranker, inviting Son Hyuk to join him and saying that he'll also need to complete the library quest. He asks Son Hyuk how long it's going to take to read all of the remaining books and how high his wisdom is and Son Hyuk said it will take about 2 or 3 weeks and that his wisdom was 925. Kim was shocked and didn't believe what he heard but Son Hyuk said his wisdom might be even a little bit higher. Son Hyuk also said that he is just a level 8 and Kim thought that a level 8 with a 925 wisdom is crazy stat so he asked him how many books he has read. Son Hyuk explains that almost every time he reads a book his stat increases by 1. For a moment Kim deeply thinks about the wisdom scaling system and whether you raise your stats faster when your level is low. Kim warns Son Hyuk to never talk about his wisdom stat since it might get him in trouble and Son Hyuk agrees. Then they talk about making a guild. In the next scene we see the two devs talking about a grade 3 job being discovered and one of them says it's normal that someone discovered the grade 3 job since the game is up for almost 2 months already. Then the second dev looks at the screen with a surprise look on his face. What a surprise, a user in Orange library acquired the title of Conqueror. The devs thought that nobody could acquire that title and found out that the character who acquired it is Son Hyuk. They look at his stat which showed his wisdom level being 1321. They confirm that this is very much possible to achieve and confirm Kim's guess that at a lower level your experience requirement is lower which means your stat can be raised merely by reading books. Dev saw that from the second day he only read books and one of them said that if he has these stats at this level it could mean that he might meet the achievement requirements. What requirements the other dev asked? Descendant of the master sorcerer. The master sorcerer's descendant could be considered the strongest of the first class jobs but the issue is that the requirement for obtaining that job is way easier than any other first class. This job was also created in case a user completely conquers Orange library. 
like a gift for users who have achieved something incredibly ridiculous. The dev said that the requirement for this achievement is wisdom of over a thousand and that the second requirement was that character's job had to be a wizard. One dev said that he could be heading on a longer journey to the kingdom instead of the mage tower. The devs also talk about the NPCs at the tower, offering Son Hyuk jobs and a change of profession if he arrives at the tower and think, mentioning that these are the second and third level jobs which are not to joke about. The next scene shows Son Hyuk reading and increasing his wisdom levels very very fast and finally reading all the books in Odin's library, acquiring the Conqueror of Odin's library achievement. Son Hyuk regretted reading all the books in the library, but he also felt quite satisfied with getting the achievement. His wisdom increases for another 10 points completing the Orange Library quest and says the amount of wisdom is nothing compared to the time spent reading. He stretches on the chair and decides to go to the tower tomorrow. In the next scene we learn that Son Hyuk's dad and mom are enjoying the installment of their capsules so they could play Panji too. Son Hyuk thinks that because of that, the world is getting better and decides to get into the capsule and starts playing, wanting to meet Kim Jong Jung. He connects and appears in the library. Hello once again, he thinks to himself as he stands in the library. Thinking he'll forever remember the library, he looks at his library pass and guesses he won't be using it anymore. Son Hyuk goes to the central square and with the help of a lady who seems to be an NPC that teleports characters to wherever they want to go, he quickly travels to the tower. He arrives at square 3 which is the wrong square, so he starts fast walking towards square 2 where he is supposed to meet Kim. While walking he overhears a conversation of two people talking about a difficult but rewarding quest. Son Hyuk arrives at a crowded square 2 and hears someone calling his name. He turns around and starts waving at a man in armor with a helmet on his head. They start talking and Kim sends him a friend request and gives him a small pouch. Son Hyuk opens it and sees a huge amount of money, 200 gold. Surprised seeing the money, he asks his friend if he's really giving it all to him and talks about a hard time he had collecting 50 gold. His friend says that he is high ranked and that the amount of money he gave him is nothing for him. Kim advised him to buy an armor set since it is very important at the beginning, but they agree that there is no need for armor right now and it would be better to reach level 10 first. They parted ways and Kim said if he ever needs anything he could let him know. Son Hyuk decides to head to the novice hunting grounds, but first buys some fresh bread for the trip. He buys the expensive bread for 10 gold. Thinking about times when he tried to make one on his own, he realizes the one he just bought is way better. He starts walking towards the hunting grounds and walks past rabbits, thinking that the experience he would get from them would be too low. Then he enters what appears to be a private area and swiftly defeats a fox. The next scene shows devs being surprised and nervous about Son Hyuk's trip to the tower and they decide to keep an eye on him, saying the NPCs will start moving in soon. One of the devs says that anyone with that level of wisdom would want a tower of their own and starts feeling worried because Son Hyuk might refuse special jobs offered by the NPCs and go back to the library. Son Hyuk swiftly continued killing foxes with his sword. He was happy reaching level 10, but realized that the difficulty dropped too much and he should change his job. In the next scene, he started running towards the library, reaching the central tower. He climbed the fourth floor, trying to get registered as a wizard. He gets welcomed by an NPC and expresses his wish to become a wizard. The NPC tells him to put his palm on top of a crystal ball. He does so and the crystal ball starts shining, which surprises the NPC. The ball cracks and the NPC tells Son Hyuk to take off his hand. The NPC couldn't believe his eyes and took out a spare mana measuring ball, thinking that the first one was malfunctioning. He tells him to place his hand on the new ball, but the same thing happens. It's the first time I've seen this tremendous light, the NPC thinks to himself. He places a piece of paper on the ball to measure Son Hyuk's talent level and the results stun him. SSS is what the paper showed, meaning Son Hyuk has an unmeasurable talent and the NPC runs to another NPC, his boss, showing him the paper. 
The boss asked him who the person with such a skill is and whether the NPC who measured it is sure that Son Hyuk is not a wizard already. The NPC said that if a person uses the magic even once, the bull would not respond and that's why it's impossible for Son Hyuk to be a wizard and his boss agrees with the statement. The boss realizes that after such a long time, the meeting of the tower's leaders needs to be held and tells the NPC to inform the leaders about it. The boss then comes to Son Hyuk and they sit in an awkward silence while waiting for the leaders. Son Hyuk sees a quest log showing him that if he refuses the quest, the friendship with Kurza, the boss will go down. He also realizes that the quest's remaining time is 14 days and sadly asks Kurza if that means that he can't change his job for two weeks, to which Kurza replies, saying that is not the case and they'll do the registration right away, but he'll come back two weeks later. Kurza then registers Son Hyuk as a wizard and Son Hyuk receives some benefits, like a plus 10 wisdom stat and an additional effect allowing him to have a higher magic defense the higher his wisdom skill rises. Kurza gives him a wizard's token and Son Hyuk takes it and tells him that he'll come back in two weeks. Son Hyuk then exits the library whistling happily. He realizes that for the next two weeks he'll be able to spend all of his time in the library. The next scene shows the NPC that Kurza sent knocking on Miss Brinis' door and Miss Brinis allows him in. What's going on? Miss Brinis asked. He said that the meeting of leaders will take place and tell her about the unmeasured talent. He said that even with Kako's improved crystal ball, they couldn't measure Son Hyuk's talent. And Kako was a person whose talent was measured unlimited 30 years ago. Miss John Brinis asked about the meeting, but he told her that the date hasn't been fixed yet, but he'll let her know. He decides to leave, but Miss Brinis asks him if it's a man or woman and what the character's age is. He tells her that it's a man in his 20s and Miss Brinis blushed. The NPC servant knew that Brinis was a kind of person that falls in love quickly and leaves thinking that anyone would fall for a person with unmeasurable talent. Son Hyuk enters a library way bigger than the one in Oren and decides to pick some of them up. He notices a blue glowing book that differs compared to others and picks it up. The book's title was Farville's Diary. John Kako requests to see a guy with tremendous power and thought he could become a part of her team, despite the competition being fierce. Meanwhile, Son Hyuk finishes reading the Farville book and unlocks a new quest where he has to find the book's author's place of death. Son Hyuk wondered if the color of this book's glow was different because of the quest and decided to put the quest off for later and continue reading more. He then wonders if there are any other special books and tries finding them. The dev team got upset finding out that Son Hyuk already entered a new library. Son Hyuk finds a red glowing book and unlocks the heritage quest, meeting the conditions to start the quest. The dev team started worrying as they realized he already met the requirements for five special quests, one of them being a very important name, Descendants Quest. They decide to keep an eye on him, increasing the surveillance priority to the special grade. Meanwhile, Son Hyuk gets excited seeing that a strong stamina quest grants him the rise in stamina stats if he completes it and decides he'll do it later. A blue-haired leader decides that he'd do anything if Son Hyuk could join his team and asks Kale about the next move. Kale says they need to postpone the meeting as much as possible, not giving an opportunity to other leaders. Kale then tells his boss to take a rest and regain his fitness. Kale explains that the meeting would not be done without them because the Tower of Dark and the Tower of Healing are unavailable and the meeting can't be held if three of the towers are not present. 
Then they come to a conclusion that the Tower of Earth would be the first one to give on Son Hyuk's unmeasurable talent. Son Hyuk completes reading books from some of the bookshelves and notices a purple glowing book this time. He picks it up and wonders if it's also a book with a quest. The book tells a story about a man building 10 towers and finding individuals who could manage the towers. These towers were towers of fire, water, wind, earth, electricity, darkness, light, holy, poison and illusion. Not being able to find a successor, the man decides to wait for a day when a successor seeks him out. Just as Son Hyuk closed the book, a new quest unlocked again. The name of the quest was Tsushima's Descendant. It was also a job quest, making it a quest of great importance. The quest required Son Hyuk to prove that he is the successor using the letter of Tsushima Sarafid. This letter is a legendary item and very few people happen to be qualified to receive it. The instructions on the letter said that if the letter is torn, it would disappear and the character would warp to the subspace created by Tsushima Sarafid. Son Hyuk tore the letter and just like that completed the job quest Tsushima's descendant and acquired the skills of Tsushima. The devs were shocked that Son Hyuk became Tsushima's descendant so easily and were thinking what to do next. Son Hyuk received a special passive effect granting him 100% additional magic damage. Son Hyuk thought having that power was like cheating in a game. He then opens a book addressing the use of the 10 doors in the subspace, symbol the elements mentioned before. The book said that every time he opens a door he would get skill quests for the properties that that door has and when all the doors are opened he'd get the true quest to become Tsushima's descendant. On the west side of the subspace there was a warp magic circle and on the east side there was a dimensional 3D library. Son Hyuk was excited about the library wondering where the passage for the library was. Son Hyuk got overwhelmed thinking about the fact that the dimensional library had all the books that exist in the Pangaea. In order to use the library he had to meet 5 conditions, the first one requiring him to become a true Tsushima's descendant. Each time he opens a new door he would have to be 100 levels higher with the exception of the first door that had no level requirement. It meant that he needed to be level 900 to open all the doors. The warp circle looked a bit scary and the library doors were locked in chains. He steps on a circle in front of the library, gaining a teleportation skill and leans his hands on his whole body on the door, thinking he'll definitely open the door one day. Now Son Hyuk starts thinking about which door to enter, remembering that people recommended him entering water, fire and thunder. Water is less destructive, but it's the best choice if you want to enter a party and I don't like joining in groups, he thinks to himself. He makes a final decision and chooses. After a couple of moments of thinking, he chose the fire door and a couple of quests, as well as skills activated already. Son Hyuk was surprised to have so many skills at level 10, but at the same time he showed huge happiness. At the Tower of Illusion, Jen Orek asks about Fabian's whereabouts. Fabian being the blonde guy who delayed the meeting for a week. Jan Kachu of the Tower of Healing and Fabian greet each other and Kachu goes straight to the main subject. In the next scene we see a guy holding Rakan's staff with a high physical and magic attack attribute entering a library and accidentally meeting Son Hyuk. They say hello to each other and the guy with the staff wonders if Son Hyuk could see some books with other glows, since the staff guy saw one with a blue glow probably because he leveled up his wisdom stats recently. Son Hyuk starts reading and the guy waits for him to finish and this was a huge mistake because as soon as Son Hyuk finished, the guy asked him about the glowing color of the book he was holding. Son Hyuk said it's white and the guy said he saw a blue glow. They came to the conclusion that if you don't meet the requirements for the book's quest or if one user completes the quest, then others can't do it, so the color of the glow would turn white. That also means that Son Hyuk is the only descendant of Tsushima. 
It was day four of the meeting when Fabian proposed an offer to Kako. In return, Kako asked for a black dragon, but Fabian offered her 200 grams of some sussy thing because they don't talk about what exactly it is, and they came to an agreement and shook hands. The dev team talked about Son Hyuk reading books the whole time and not doing the actual quest for a week, but they also knew that it's not like there is an infinite amount of books in the tower's library. The meeting came to an end and Kacho made a final decision saying that the unmeasured talent or in other words Son Hyuk will be managed by the poison tower. Fabian celebrates as John Coden of the Tower of Light says that poison magic is special and no matter how talented a wizard may be he'll get addicted to magic. He proceeds by asking what happens if the unmeasured talent has weak immunity to poison magic and whether Fabian would be willing to pass him to another tower if that happens to be the case. Fabian says he is okay with it, but mentioned that he also knows how to increase the immunity, reminiscing about himself having a very little immunity level at first too. Sitting in a library, Son Hyuk feels a sudden chill. Son Hyuk walks to the tower and Kurza gives him an envelope. The envelope said that it should be taken to the poison tower, but Son Hyuk exits the tower and encounters a young man that interrupted Son Hyuk earlier, telling him to wait in the line of the tower's entrance. In the next scene we see a group of people talking about Pangea and the son of the boss of a company asking one of the guys to help him out in the game. Earlier that day, when Son Hyuk skipped the line in front of the tower's entrance, the young boy asked himself why he had to stand in the line and Son Hyuk didn't, thinking he might be a person of importance. The boy asked Son Hyuk what he was doing in the tower, but Son Hyuk told him to not disturb him. The young guy decided to follow Son Hyuk in order to find out the truth of Son Hyuk's privilege. The devs were again frustrated with Son Hyuk spending his time in the library and not actually playing the game. The young guy following Son Hyuk entered the library and interrupted him saying, if I were you, I would have changed my mind. Son Hyuk told him to stop with the annoyance, so the guy stepped back and said that if Son answered his questions, he would have helped him out later. The moment you come out of the library, you're done thought the young man, and he waited outside the library and waited and waited. Realizing that Son Hyuk is not exiting the library anytime soon, he opened the door and slammed his hand on the book Son Hyuk was reading, shouting, ANSWER ME! Son refused and librarian NPC approached, telling the young man that if he continued shouting, he would be forcibly expelled and would not be able to enter the library for a month. The young guy logged out plotting Son Hyuk's murder in a desire to steal his documents. The young man waited for Son to log and tried killing him with his electricity rod. Son Hyuk survived the attack and the man tried casting a spell again, but Son poisoned and paralyzed him. Meanwhile Fabian got frustrated because Son Hyuk never came to visit him, so he sent Kale to find Son as soon as possible. Kale found out that Son Hyuk spent his time in the library and reported back to Fabian. Fabian was happy Son Hyuk was alive and not kidnapped, as he thought he was. Then he teleported to the streets and found Son fighting with the electricity boy and immediately tried saving Son Hyuk's life. Fabian cast a spell at Electricity Boy and he saved Son Hyuk, seemingly killing the Electricity Boy. Son Hyuk realizes he has to level up a bit as Fabian approaches him and with a smile on his face says, your precious body is fine. Son Hyuk asks him if he knew his name and he says his name is Fabian. Son Hyuk realizes he is one of the tower masters and thinks whether he should submit the envelope to Fabian or not. Son Hyuk gives him the envelope and Fabian tells him to come with him to the poison tower. Son refuses but Fabian grabs his hands and pulls it, but unsuccessfully. Then he goes to the poison tower telling Kale about the incident. Son Hyuk obviously wanted to read and not waste his time in the poison tower. The devs discuss some strange perks Son Hyuk received, thinking those were bugs, but they weren't. Fabian gives Son Hyuk poison and tells him to take it daily to boost his immunity. Son Hyuk decides to go on a hunt and buys a spell named Magic Missile. People mocked Son Hyuk being level 10 and trying to hunt, but as soon as he fired the magic missile, he one shot the fox with ease. Son Hyuk checked his experience gained for killing the fox and realized he advanced just 1% towards the next level. Special jobs required more experience than regular jobs, so Son Hyuk's level 
leveling would be 5 times slower compared to players with normal jobs. Well, at least I have a promising profession, he thought. Soon he moves to wolves and starts leveling up using his sword and spells. It took him just 7 minutes to level up and he thought that was awesome. Just as he was about to leave, the king wolf appeared. Son Hyuk calculated if he would be able to defeat him, but he decided to retreat so he ran away as fast as he could. Other players displayed great skills hunting as a team, defeating stronger animals using various attacking and healing spells. The team plan for most people was to have a tank, healer and mages, as that would be the easiest way to gain a lot of experience in a short time, without anyone suffering a lot or even dying. One group wanted to fight the wolves, but they encountered a wolf that didn't want to attack them. As soon as they started investigating the wolf's behavior, a huge explosion happened in the forest and birds flew out of their nests and trees. The players turned towards the loud noise and tried to figure out what the hell is going on. Now on the other side of the forest, Son Hyuk was leveling up using a new spell, Fire Spear, which seemed to cause the explosion. Using the health potions to recover his HP, Son Hyuk fought with wolves using the Fire Spear spell whenever it came back from cooldown. That's right, he couldn't just spam the spell, each time he used it, it would go on a cooldown and then he would have to use another spell instead. He fires the fireball and magic missile to one shot each and every target, realizing that this way of leveling was way easier than using the sword. He kept firing the spells continuously, causing lots of noise, but also gaining lots of experience too. Something caught his attention and as soon as he turned his head there it was, the king wolf, the beast he previously ran away from knowing there's no way to defeat it. Now looking very confident and determined he decides to fight him. The king wolf was surrounded by weaker wolves so Son Hyuk wanted to defeat them one by one first. He fired his spells at them and killed most of them, having only two more to go. First he hid in the bush waiting for the cooldowns and then fired his spells killing them with ease. Deciding to wait for his cooldowns again, he hides behind a tree in hopes that the king wolf doesn't run away. A few seconds later, Son Hyuk reveals himself to the wolf and the wolf starts running towards him. Son Hyuk uses the fire spear first, hitting the wolf but still not killing him. Then he fires a magic missile and a fireball, hits it again but the wolf stands there still not dead. Seemingly confused, Son Hyuk looks at the wolf seeing his eyes looking weird, thinking he's definitely fainted. He decides to look at his inventory, but the king wolf recovers faster than Son Hyuk thought and hits him with his bow, sending him flying and reducing Son Hyuk's health by 500 points. Son Hyuk quickly pulls out a health potion and drinks it before he takes too much damage. The angry wolf was ready to attack him again, but Son Hyuk's magic missile was ready to be used, so he fired it, killing the wolf at last. The King Wolf's death disabled the wolf spawn for 5 minutes and Son Hyuk acquired the Wolf Habitat Conqueror title, awarded to players who managed to kill the King Wolf alone. Gaining the title made Son Hyuk happier than leveling up. At that moment a group of players that heard the explosions came and inspected the King Wolf's body while Son Hyuk hid behind a tree. He overheard their conversation where they talked about grabbing King Wolf's loot. They felt a bit scared, thinking that their current location looks kinda weird and decided to head back where they came from. Son Hyuk comes out of the bush and as he reaches level 12 and increases his other stats, he stretches getting ready to level up some more. Meanwhile the dev team spend their time in the office, one of them napping and the other one enjoying his cup of coffee. It seems that both of them are thinking about Son Hyuk's development in the game and now they are witnessing him actually playing the game and hunting instead of just reading books the whole time in the library. Son Hyuk was already level 18 and the dev who napped was surprised thinking that just a few minutes earlier Son Hyuk was just at level 10. 
They discussed his stay at the same hunting ground, killing the same creatures over and over again, saying that since other mages were unable to hunt the wolves by themselves, the spawn was free and Sonhyuk is now able to solo hunt as much as he wants. A few moments later, they realize he stopped hunting and went to the library. Let's go Sonhyuk. Sonhyuk receives a call from Kim and Kim tells him he met the requirements to create a guild, so he did. Kim also said that another guild named Doko bothered him. Doko guild was the first guild on Pangaea and Kim got into a fight with them but not a physical fight. Doko guild had a policy of not allowing newbies to join them and Kim expressed his disagreement leading them into a verbal fight. Sonhyuk wanted to ask Kim to help him with a quest but realized that Kim had other problems. Kim apologized for bringing up some bad news and tells Sonhyuk that his guild's name is Readers. Now we see Sonhyuk firing his spells and hunting wolves with ease again. He checks his inventory and sees that he looted many wolf fangs, paws and leather and calculates how much profit he could get if he sells everything. Then he looks at his stats and realizes that the wolf's spawn is kind of bad for him right now because at his current level it takes a lot of time to level up killing wolves. Before changing the hunting place he decides to sell his loot and becomes able to finally learn some skills. He then thinks about going back to hunting but of course my boy changes his mind and goes back to the library. Sitting in the library he suddenly notices a shining book meaning his wolf habitat conqueror title enabled him to meet the requirements for a new quest. Sonhyuk took the book and looked at the title which said Wolf Hunter Karu. He started reading the book thoroughly. The book's story was about Karu's father's belongings being taken away and him being unsuccessful in retrieving them. The special quest window appeared requesting Sonhyuk to find the relic that belonged to Wolf Hunter Karu's father. The quest requirements were killing one king wolf, 100 wolves and finding the relic, with the quest reward being unknown. Sonhyu hit the table with his fists in anger, realizing he'll have to hunt wolves again. Been there, done that. Now, we see Fabian talking to a man who asked him about teaching Sonhyuk. Fabian answered saying that if Sonhyuk starts training with him, he'd just poison himself since his immunity is still very weak. So the best thing for him would be to start strengthening his immunity first. With 29 days left for Sonhyuk to strengthen his poison immunity system and start the training, Fabian hints his servant that he should start preparing for all the things that will be needed until that day comes. Comes. He tells the servant that the poison of Karas is of great importance and it needs to be ready too and then decides to pay a visit to Miss Brinis. Sonhyuk closes the Wolf Hunter Karu book, realizing that reading doesn't give him as much wisdom as it did before. He knew he had to continue leveling up so he made a plan to go to the tower and buy some items, then travel to the poison tower and take the poison and then finally go back to the wolf habitat and gain more experience. Walking to the poison tower, Sonhyuk wondered which spell should be next for purchase. There are certain spells he could learn by buying items from the fire tower and their names are firestorm, flame, firewall and hellfire. Each of these spells requires specific items from the fire tower store and after purchasing them the new spell would unlock, but of course these items cost a lot of money. Sonyuk started thinking about the spells and which one would suit him at the current moment considering his level, amount of gold he had and some other factors too. Sonhyuk arrived at the fire tower's shop and a female NPC welcomed him asking if she could help him. Sonhyuk asked about the price of the lesser demon soul stone and after the NPC told him the price he knew he needed exactly 350 gold to buy the hellfire spell. Next he chose between firewall and flame and decided to buy the firewall since flame is a single target spell and it wouldn't go well with hellfire. Sonhyuk bought one lesser demon soul stone and some other items needed for the firewall and hellfire spells. 
He became very happy and excited purchasing new spells and wanted to go to the wolves as soon as possible. Sun Hyuk arrived at the poison tower and met with Fabian. Fabian welcomed him with a poison potion in his hand and told him to drink it and he did, wondering what effect it would have on his body. His muscles became stiff and he got paralyzed for the next 30 minutes. The funny thing is he got paralyzed while standing and he thought that 30 minutes of not being able to move is just too much. Fabian stood in front of him, waiting for the paralyzing effect to disappear by infusing him with his mana, lowering the time being paralyzed. The effect stopped after a few minutes and Fabian thought it's incredible how the mana infusing effect worked way better than he thought, probably because of Son Hyuk's immeasurable talent. Son Hyuk moved his hands realizing the paralyzing effect was over and Fabian laughed saying it's enough for the day. A 30 day quest window pops up informing Son Hyuk that he lacks immunity to poison and that he should take the poison given by Fabian once a day. They say their goodbyes and Son Hyuk decides to go for a hunt. He throws a fire spear spell and one of the wolves start howling calling for his friends. Five of the wolves gather and Son Hyuk fires the hellfire spell which has a chain reaction and damages all of the wolves killing them in a quick fashion. Really, really satisfying to do such thing in an RPG game. Now another wolf howls and Son Hyuk happily waits for them to arrive. After finishing the killing of 100 wolves, Son Hyuk tries finding the wolf king, firing his spells and causing noise in an attempt to provoke and lure the wolf king out. The wolf king finally arrives and Son Hyuk casts the magic missile spell, hoping to kill the wolf king and loot Karu's father's relic. Now we see him firing magic missile spell on the king wolf in hopes he will get stunned by it now and boom after the explosion he really did. While the king wolf was stunned, Son Hyuk used this time to cast his firewall spell, making the firewall emerge beneath the king wolf and finally killing him off. The message pops up again saying that the king wolf is defeated and that for the next 5 minutes all wolves in this area are in a state of fear. After completing the quest, he receives a map for a reward and realizes that it's a map of a Matab library and there's a certain bookshelf circled on the map. Since he over leveled the wolf area now, he decided to go grind some levels up against different kinds of mobs and went all the way to the treant area thinking it will be really easy for him because trees are weak to fire and his spell arsenal is consisted of all fire school spells. And he was right, it was so easy killing the treants and he leveled up so fast, realizing his wisdom was really high so if he had more confidence in him and came here earlier he would have leveled up even faster. He continues farming the treants but this time thinking that as soon as his experience gains slow down he'll go to the higher hunting area. Now we see Dev's concerned because Archmage Descendant job is a top tier job and requires a lot of experience to reach but at the speed Son Hyuk is leveling at right now he'll reach it in no time. One of the devs explained that he probably started hunting and grinding XP because of Pavian because before meeting Pavian all he did was read books but now all of a sudden he is hunting. As they are talking, Son Hyuk continues racking up XP and leveling up insanely fast. So fast the devs comment how even the hunting king wasn't this fast at leveling and if he continues going at this pace he'll reach level 100 real soon and unlock the second gate. But other dev calms him down saying that even if he reaches level 100 fast and is an archmage descendant, unlocking second gate is way more difficult than the first one and because of this Son Hyuk won't be able to unlock it straight away. Now we go back to Son Hyuk in the library looking at the book that the map he got from the previous quest pointed him to and realizes that this quest is a chain quest. After reading the book, he gains another treasure map that points him to go to the devil's nest now. Since Son Hyuk didn't hear about this place before, he decides to message his friend Yeon Jung, the guy who introduced him to the game, but after trying to whisper him he realizes that Yeon Jung turned off chat for some reason. 
Now we see the boy who wanted to kill Son Hyuk earlier before talking to some other mage on the street thinking how he had to grind so much to reach the current rank. Well this guy is a pay to win player who bought it all with money. After this pay to win mage leaves and teleports away, this boy thinks about Son Hyuk again wondering if he's still in the library reading, thinking how even though he died last time they fought, he will not give up on killing Son Hyuk so easily and also wonders about the poison that killed him the last time because he doesn't know the guy who casted this poison on him but he thinks how he'll kill that guy as well next time he sees him. Just then Son Hyuk exits the library and this jelly boy sees him and realizes that Son Hyuk has joined the poison tower because he's wearing their robes. As he casts his electro ball spell on Son Hyuk, Son Hyuk spots him too and casts magic missile on this boy, while well, this boy laughs thinking how magic missile is a weak spell and he won't even bother dodging it. As he's finalizing the cast of his electro ball, he hears Son Hyuk casting a second spell already and realizes Son Hyuk can dual cast spells. They enter the combat and this boy immediately gets stunned while fireball is still flying towards him, so he can dodge it. But before the fireball even hit him, he realizes that he already lost over 80% of his health and thinks how he's gonna die in a stun lock without doing anything. Boom, the fireball hits him and he dies. He wakes up in real life, raging and cussing, trying to figure out how Son Hyuk killed him so quickly. Because he has a lot of HP as well and realizes that Son Hyuk is probably a way too high of a level for him. He gets covered in cold sweat, realizing he might have made a huge mistake, making Son Hyuk his enemy in the game. Now we go back to Son Hyuk, looking at the dead body of this boy, thinking how he died so fast. He loots his body and finds a rare ring that increases all stats by 10 and Song Hyuk realizes that this jelly boy had to grind so much in the game to get this item, so it was a good thing Son Hyuk was a high level and killed him. Now we see Son Hyuk waiting to enter Fabian's office in the poison tower and thinks how someone important must be in now because Son Hyuk can't go in. Just then Brinis, the fire mage girl, leaves Fabian's office and she and Son Hyuk lock eyes. She asks the guard if this is really him and after the guard confirms it, she starts blushing and runs away telling Son Hyuk see you next time. Son Hyuk a bit confused thinks if she belongs to the fire tower and then Fabian calls him in and gives him another poison potion to train his poison immunity. After drinking the potion he gets paralyzed again and thinks how he prefers paralyzing poison way more than other ones like bleeding, blindness, freezing etc. Also paralysis lasts the shortest amount of time out of all of these which makes it better as well. Son Hyuk thinks about how he needs to drink these potion poisons for 25 more days to raise his immunity. Now we see some ogres or orcs whatever on Pelham mountain looking at their village from a distance and seeing a fire tornado in it and they are wondering why is it there in the first place. They rush in the village and see all of their friends and family dead and then they see Son Hyuk who was just casually leveling here. Bros, why are they giving us an insight into the lives of mobs we grind in the games? I don't want to feel sorry for them, I just want to loot them, get their, <laughs> like get experience from killing them and go on to kill more of their family and friends. What the hell guys? So as this orc takes out his axe to try and kill Son Hyuk now, Son Hyuk casts his inferno spell on this orc giving him a ticking fire dot that starts burning his body slowly. As the orc charges at Son Hyuk, he casts a magic missile on him and boom, he manages to defeat this orc who was also a chieftain of this clan. But then a message appears saying these orcs will now fall in the state of chaos which will increase their damage by 50% but decrease their defenses by 50% as well. As Son Hyuk looks up, there is another bigger orc charging at him and as Son Hyuk tries to cast a spell to kill him, an arrow hits this orc in the head from the back. 
Then we see another player who's a hunter and he introduces himself to Son Hyuk saying his name is Doran. He apologizes to Son Hyuk saying how he didn't know that Son Hyuk was hunting here but Son Hyuk responds by saying no problem I wasn't hunting here. Now for a moment both of them they stare at each other in confusion and then at the same time continue killing the orcs. Doran then asks Son Hyuk if he's going to continue hunting here or what because if he will, Doran will go to other place and hunt trolls instead. Son Hyuk awkwardly says that he will be hunting orcs right now after all, so Doran leaves and wishes Son Hyuk good luck. Before leaving, Doran inspected Son Hyuk and after seeing how high of a level he is, thinks how it's really weird for Son Hyuk to not be in a guild yet. He reports this to his guild leader who doesn't believe him and Doran tells him that there's no need for him to lie about this and if he had an option to invite to guild he would invite him and doesn't understand why can't he invite people to the guild in the first place since he's the vice leader of the guild after all. His guild leader tells Doran that he'll give him 5k gold if there's really a player above level 250 that's not in a guild and another 5k gold if Doran recruits such a player to their guild. Doran happily leaves thinking how it would be nice if Son Hyuk joined their guild. Now we see Doran decides to keep killing orcs and fires a death arrow at one of them. The orcs scream but as the arrow hits his chest he stops and looks at his skin turning black. A second later the orc explodes and all of the other orcs around him die too. Doran just stands there in smoke and thinks where Son Hyuk could be. Meanwhile Son Hyuk was on the other side of the hunting place casting his spells and killing orcs one by one. The orcs charged at him but Son Hyuk would just cast the spells and watch them burn since they couldn't even come close to him. A moment later a very different kind of orc approaches and stomps the ground with his foot. This was the chief of the red orc tribe Kauzo and he could speak human language. Kauzo's appearance was different compared to the regular orcs since he had an armor and a helmet on. Son Hyuk doesn't overthink about his appearance too much and just fires one of his spells in attempt to finish him off quickly. The spell hits Kauzo but he just stands there unbothered swinging his club and growling. Son Hyuk was a bit surprised but decided to cast the magic missile spell since Kauzo was still standing. Magic missile spell hits him and Kauzo despite his dangerous looks growls for the last time and his dreams of defeating a human disappear as he falls down and dies. Son Hyuk then sees a message saying that he's defeated Kauzo and for the next 10 minutes the red orcs would gain a great increase in their attack power. Son Hyuk wiped the sweat off his forehead and proudly looked at the chaos he caused. At that moment somebody appeared behind him calling him and Son Hyuk recognized the voice thinking it must be Doran. He nervously turns towards Doran and greets him. Doran smiles and wholeheartedly invites Son Hyuk to join his guild. Son Hyuk seemed a bit confused but Doran tried to explain saying he would really like it if Son Hyuk joined his guild. Son Hyuk scratches his head and says he's really sorry but he's already made up his mind and decided to join his friend's guild. This surprised Doran a bit and he started thinking of another way of befriending Son Hyuk so he just directly asked him if they could be friends. Son Hyuk looked at the guy thinking it's kind of weird trying to make friends so hard but Doran kept looking at him as a dog looks at its owner. Before answering Doran's question, Son Hyuk thought about some reasons that compelled him to approach him and ask such a question. Doran interrupts his thoughts saying that having friends and connections is very important in Pangaea, hence he'd like them to be friends and help each other in the future. Doran then comes closer and speaking very gently asks him if they could be friends. Son Hyuk thinks for a moment but then quickly answers and says he will be his friend. Doran rejoices if he's just met his first friend ever. Bros, is my boy Doran down bad? Tell me down in the comments below what do you think. Now Doran asks for Son Hyuk's name so he could add him to his friend list. Then a window appears and as Son Hyuk attempts to accept Doran's friend request, he realizes that Doran is level 321 which surprises him a little bit 
probably thinking why should such a high level ask for his friendship. On the other hand, Doran gets surprised seeing Son Hyuk's level, realizing that he's only level 92. They part their ways and Doran continues hunting, thinking how we... <laughs> <laughs> thinking how wizards are unfairly OP. I've been there, I've done that. Have you been in this spot before when you've been playing video games? There, God, bros, bros. You know you've been crying calling other classes OP. I know you, I know you. Back to the story, Doran fires another death arrow at an orc and then thinks to himself that there must be something about Son Hyuk that makes him so strong. Doran then overhears a conversation between Kim and Son Hyuk, where Kim asks him about their friendship. While casually destroying the orc village, Son Hyuk tells Kim that he didn't know he'd know Doran. Kim then asks him about their encounter, and Son Hyuk answers, saying that Doran just asked him to be friends after refusing to join his guild. Kim asks him if he's for real, because Doran actually never looks for friends, instead he looks for connections. He also mentioned that he's been good to him and praised him for being loyal. Son Hyuk jokes and asks Kim if he's even more loyal than him and Kim responds saying he's better than Doran and is the definition of loyalty. Then they end the conversation and Son Hyuk continues hunting, realizing his progress has been quite slow recently and considering he moves to trolls. Son Hyuk then remembers he should let Doran know when he finishes hunting orcs, so he tells him he's done and he'll move on to trolls and wishes Doran fun leveling on orcs. Doran thanks him and suggests they do a dungeon together sometimes. Son Hyuk walks away from the orc village and starts looking around for trolls. Unable to find the trolls, he fires a spell randomly and hits a tree, killing an orc. Son Hyuk just smiles, thinking it's funny the orc happened to be just behind the tree and continues his search, wondering if they're hiding all over the place. After the hunt he went to the store and sold the loot and gained 9000 gold, which was equal to 10,001, but the amount he needed was 810,001. Son Hyuk then happily goes and buys some books. He thought about killing 1000 trolls, but maybe it would be good to kill 5000 of them to get a title. As he ran his fingers through the books, he wondered if it was possible to get a level 100 after killing 5000 trolls. Then suddenly a yellow shining book appeared, so he picked it up. The title of the book was On Trolls Blood, and the book was about humans gaining power from trolls blood. As he finished reading it, a new special quest needed to be done. He looked at the quest info, but it just said Trolls Regeneration, not showing the location or any other info. All he had to do was kill 4000 trolls and loot 500 troll blood, and the quest reward was gaining a new skill called the Might of the Trolls Blood. It surprised Son Hyuk that the reward for the quest was a new skill, but he made a conclusion that a yellow quest, the one from the yellow book, grants players a new skill as a reward if completed. However, the quest requested him to loot 500 trolls blood, but he needed to kill at least 30 of them to get one trolls blood. Another problem was that even though he could buy the trolls blood in the market, each one cost 90 gold, so it would be impossible to buy 500 of them. Son Hyuk then decided to at least fulfill the first requirement of the quest, which was to kill 5000 trolls. Now we go back to the real world and see some guys were having a break at work and talked about their vacation plans. One of them said he'll have a vacation in Herdin, a city in Pangaea, saying he heard that the view there is absolutely breathtaking. The other guy said he made a good choice and asked him whether he has a character in Pangaea. The first guy said he does and he leveled his character to level 6 during his free time and mentioned that his friend Jizo will head for Herdin as well. Then the second guy asks him about Son Hyuk and his vacation plans and he answers saying he plays Pangaea too and that's the reason he decided to spend his holiday in Pangaea. The second guy couldn't believe Son Hyuk is playing Pangaea, but he tells him that at first it surprised him too. The alarm on their phone started ringing, meaning the break time was over and it was time to work. 
Meanwhile, Son Hyuk spent his time killing trolls in order to complete the quest and gain the mysterious skill. Chain Fire helped him kill a large number of trolls since it could kill multiple enemies at once. The trolls burned as if they are in hell. After some time, Son Hyuk checked his stats and realized he killed about 3000 trolls and collected about 150 trolls blood which was still not enough for the completion of the quest. He continued killing trolls, wondering whether spending the gold was a good idea, but then realized that killing them is easy and killing 10,000 trolls shouldn't be that tiring. Suddenly, something made noise behind a large tree and Son Hyuk thought it's just another hunter, but after seeing the monster, he realized it's a twin-headed troll named Argo. Now when we look at Argo bros, we can see he's not prettier than the other trolls, but actually, he was two times uglier than them because he had two heads. <laughs> so Son Hyuk didn't know there was a boss in the trolls area and Argo immediately swung his club at Son Hyuk but luckily missed. Son Hyuk thought that if he got hit by the troll he'd die at the spot. He fired a firestorm and the troll screamed in pain. Then a flame spell followed, then a magic missile and fire spear and Argo disappeared in smoke. After a couple of seconds he reappeared, still alive and standing, but one of his heads down in flames. Son Hyuk then fires a magic missile annoyed by his endurance. Magic missile hits the troll and finishes it off, now both of his heads are down. The troll collapses in front of Son Hyuk and a message appears saying Argo has been killed. Son Hyuk feels a sensation of leveling up and checks his stats. The stats said his current level was 100 and he started celebrating the 100th level milestone. He remembers that reaching the level 100 would allow him to open the second door and do some new quests. And so he did. He appeared in a room with many doors and wondered what door he should open next. He decided to learn poison magic later and since fire isn't compatible with water, he decided to go with the wind door. He put his hand on the door and it started opening. A text appeared and said that the wind golem was summoned and instructed him to defeat it. Son Hyuk got confused as he looked at the wind golem appearing from the magical circle on the floor. The golem was huge and it looked like it was made of stone. Son Hyuk looked at the golem surprised by its size and a message appeared saying that the test had started. The golem's eyes started glowing and Son Hyuk knew it was time to attack it. He fired a magic missile thinking the test would be quite simple since the only thing he needed to do is to kill the golem. The magic missile suddenly disappeared and the missile's damage had been nullified. Son Hyuk got scared, wondering what kind of magic that was and the golem suddenly started walking towards him. Son Hyuk then fired all of his other spells in hopes to damage and finally defeat the giant, but the golem just continued walking towards him unbothered by his weak attacks. As he came close to Son Hyuk, he swung at him with his huge hand and Son Hyuk panicked. Meanwhile, the dev talked about Son Hyuk choosing the wind element and talked about his reasoning behind that choice. One of them said that Son Hyuk chose wind because of its compatibility. The other dev said that the wind is a very good choice indeed, for example, it would be difficult to fight wind using fire. Then they looked at the screen and watched his fight with the golem. Son Hyuk managed to dodge golem's powerful attack and survive but had no idea how to defeat him. As the golem hit the ground, Son Hyuk's speed got reduced by 30% and made the fight with the golem even more uncomfortable. The golem attacked again and Son Hyuk dodged it one more time. He desperately fired a fireball at it, but the golem nullified it again. Son Hyuk didn't give up and tried attacking again, aiming for the head, wondering if the nullification spell had a cooldown too. It appeared that was not the case and the giant attacked Son Hyuk again, but he swiftly dodged this attack too. Son Hyuk already used all of his potions and wondered how long he could last in the fight. He casted a fire spear and hit its head and the golem stopped attacking. He just stood there and Son Hyuk looked at him wondering if he's dead. 
Then a message appeared and said that the wind golem's health has dropped below 50%, so Sonhyuk realized that attacks in the head actually caused some damage and were not nullified as the ones aimed at the chest. Suddenly a new message appears and says that the wind golem has started its first awakening. Sonhyuk had no idea what that meant and worried about golem's health dropping by 50% only even after attacking him many times. Few moments later, the awakening process completed and the golem looked a little bit different now with some blue marks on its body. Just as he wanted to cast another spell, the golem disappeared. Sonhyuk got confused and looked left and right trying to locate the golem. He then looked above him and saw the golem falling down. He knew he'd get crushed and die if he didn't dodge the attack, so he started running away from the area of impact. The golem landed exactly where Sonhyuk was standing, but as Sonhyuk ran away a bit, the golem sent him flying. He was happy to be alive for a moment, but as his health was very low, after falling on the ground, he just died. A message appeared and said he's been killed by the wind golem and failed the trial of the wind. As a penalty, the wind doors were closed and he had a restriction entering the door. As he died, Sonhyuk decided to exit the Pangea game and take off his helmet, wondering what exactly that restriction meant. The only thing he was sure about was that being restricted from entering the wind door wasn't a joke. He started thinking of ways to defeat the golem and wondered if he chose the wrong door since the wind golem clearly nullified his attacks. In the end, he decided to challenge the wind golem again, but this time he'd have to bring more potions. Sonhyuk realized that in order to bring him down to 50% of health with 20 potions, buying more than 40 potions should be just enough. He faced the golem again, but after the awakening phase, the golem healed his health completely. He did so the last time too, but Sonhyuk didn't realize it. The awakening phase made the golem move ways faster and he killed Sonhyuk again. He took off his helmet and thought that after the awakening phase completes and the golem starts moving very quickly, there's no time to use potions since he'd get one shot by the golem in no time. Sonhyuk thought the devs created the wind golem so the players would waste their potions and waste their time. After thinking a lot about the element that's compatible with his fire spells, he just gave up and decided to read some books in his room. Later that day, Sonhyuk logged into the game again and continued killing trolls. He killed 10,000 trolls and achieved the Enemy of Trolls title. Sonhyuk remembered that Doran told him he would get a title each time he killed 10,000 trolls, and he really did. Suddenly he received another stat increase, this time his stamina increased by 100 points. Meanwhile Doran was with Pavi, talking in the forest. Doran tells him that he should kill 10k trolls too to gain the extra 100 stamina points, but Pavi tells him that he's talking nonsense and there is no way it's true. Doran explains to him that someone he knows just gave him this information and Pavi asks about the person's name. Doran tells him that it's just one of Kim's friends and Pavi asks if it's the guy he met while hunting orcs and Doran confirms it. While Pavi thought that killing 10k trolls would be very exhausting, Doran thought it's just amazing and hoped to finish the task too, hunting trolls whenever he had some free time. Doran then tells Pavi about the Doko guild and a guy named Kevin getting kicked out, saying it all started with their commander who suddenly started player kicking. Pavi tells Doran that the player kicking commander is the right hand man of the Nebula faction and two of them continue talking about Kevin and the crash of the Doko guild mentioning that there will definitely be a new guild in Headland. Sonhyuk went to the shop and bought 80 more trolls blood, meaning he finally managed to collect all of them. After fulfilling all the conditions, he checked his quest log and wondered what the special skill would be. A window appeared and said he finished the quest and was rewarded with a new skill. The new skill was a passive one, giving him a special effect of recovering his health 
two times faster and doubling his total HP. Sonhyuk thought it's crazy his health is doubled, so he quickly checked his stats and saw a whopping 56k health. He started thinking, wondering if he'd be able to defeat the wind golem after his health increase and health regeneration double increase. Now Sonhyuk finally comes to the conclusion that if the golem speed and damage are taken into consideration, there's no way of defeating it even with health being doubled. Sonhyuk came back to Fabian and asked him if the poison he held in his hand was the last one he's going to use to strengthen his immunity to poison. Fabian told him it was the last one, proud of his young apprentice. Sonhyuk took a close look at the poison and thought it looked kind of scary. Despite its weird color, he quickly chugged the potion and wondered what effect it would have on his body while Fabian looked at him proudly. Fabian then asked him about the potion's taste and Sonhyuk told him it tasted kinda sweet. He explained to Son Hyuk that the sweet taste means his immunity has greatly increased and congratulated him. Son Hyuk completed the 30 day journey quest and acquired a poison master title. His teacher told him that he's ready and asked if he would like to learn about poison magic. He answered saying he's ready and Fabian walked up to one of the shelves and told him to wait until he finds something. He picked up one of the books and gave it to Son Hyuk. He took the book and looked at its white light, knowing that the white books are offering skill quests. Son Hyuk then tried asking his teacher why he would give him a book, but Fabian said that the best way to study poison magic is to study it by yourself, so that's why he's giving him a book to read. Fabian promised him that since he already is very talented and his immunity has increased, he'll be able to succeed learning about poison magic in at least one or two tries. Son Hyuk was not sure whether he'd be able to use his mana and cast poison spells, but Fabian reassured him he would and told Son Hyuk that he had prepared all the materials required for casting magic and to come visit him anytime. Son Hyuk understood that some materials are necessary, but he had no idea what they would look like. Then he suddenly thought about opening the prison door, wondering if that could be a good idea and whether he'd be able to complete all the skill quests. Fabian finally told him to ask him if he's got any questions and Sonhyuk exited the poison tower. A poison master's passive skill granted him the immunity on his own and the ordinary poison and Sonhyuk thought it's kind of amazing. He decided to enter the poison door and give it a try. Inside the poison toad waited for him and the task was to either defeat it or survive for 30 minutes. The fog was huge and there was a thick foggy cloud underneath it. The message saying that the test had begun appeared, so the frog stood up and the thick fog disappeared. Sonhyuk decided to shoot a magic missile at it, but just as it hit the target, the frog started emitting some kind of poison. Sonhyuk panicked and put his hands in front of himself as if he's trying to protect himself from the poison, but suddenly realized that the poison isn't affecting him because of the poison master skill. He thought about waiting for 30 minutes, but he wasn't sure if the frog would get any stronger if he waited, so Sonhyuk decided to fire some spells. He realizes that fire burns the poison, so he cast all of his fire spells, wondering if the toad has a second stage too, just like the wind golem. But surprisingly, a message appeared and said the toad has been defeated and he passed the test. A couple of skill quests for the poison area activated and Son Hyuk couldn't believe his eyes, surprised that he managed to defeat the toad so easily. Thinking of the OP golem in the wind area, he thought that the difference in difficulty level between these two bosses he faced was huge and there should be some kind of balancing. The first two poison skill quests he saw were poison and blast and poison fog, so Son Hyuk decided to get the materials to be able to use these spells. He then looks at the stats and realizes the master sorcerer ability, the passive skill granted him 100% additional damage in magic attract and reduced his cooldowns strengthened too. Seeing that not only fire spells but all of his spells would have a reduced cooldown from now on, he thought it's kind of OP. 
Sonhyuk got a bit carried away by his skill and wondered if he could open another door and defeat another boss too. He arrived at the poison tower the next day and talked to Fabian about the materials needed for poison magic. Sonhyuk listed all of the things he wanted to buy and Fabian wrote it down on paper. The list was huge and Fabian was surprised by Sonhyuk's interest in poison magic. After ordering the materials, Fabian told him to come back tomorrow until he prepares everything, thinking that this kind of behavior could be expected of the unmeasurable talent. Sonhyuk went to the library to pick up some books and thought about the family vacation being only three days away. As he browsed through the books, he saw a purple one, wondering why is it purple since he already read it before. Sonhyuk looked at the book and realized that he probably fulfilled the condition by opening the poison door and now he's able to start a quest with the book. Upon this realization, he starts looking for some other shining books. A few seconds later, Sonhyuk found a book that thought fire magic. He opened the book and started reading until he stumbled upon a page that talked about the primal flame skill, wondering if he'd acquire the spell if he completes reading the whole book. And so he did, he finished reading it, but the only message that popped up was the one saying that his wisdom has been greatly increased. It was the first time for him to see a message like this, so he decided to check his stats. His wisdom increased by a staggering 500 points and Son Hyuk got flabbergasted by this fact, just like I did right now. He looked at the first book he picked up when he came to the library and wondered if that book would increase his wisdom by 500 too. Son Hyuk opened it, read it and as he finished the book, the same message appeared and said that his wisdom has been greatly increased again. He checks the stats and sees his wisdom really has increased by 500. Thinking that it must be normal for his class to acquire lots of wisdom points, but 500 was quite a bit. Son Hyuk looks at the shelves and sees there are 8 more books that would probably give him 500 points each, remembering that he thought he need to be level 900 to acquire this much wisdom. Son Hyuk comes back to the poison tower to pick up the materials and Fabian takes him to a large room. Son Hyuk looks around thinking there are no materials he ordered from Fabian, but Fabian reaches his pocket and takes out a small pouch saying he'd prepared all the things Son Hyuk mentioned a day before. He takes the bag thinking there is no way all of the materials could fit inside since he ordered hundreds of them. Sonhyuk checks his inventory and sees a slot with Fabian's pouch. He opens the slot and realizes that all of the items are stacked in the slots of the pouch, just as they are in every RPG game. Sonhyuk then uses the items to complete the skill quests and obtains two new poison spells called Poison Tentacles and Poison Fog. Fabian tells Son Hyuk to test his magic skill and waves his hand, summoning some practice dummies. Son Hyuk recognizes the dummies as Ryan Scarecrows and remembers there is a quest that requires a player to destroy a couple of Iron Scarecrows. Fabian crossed his hands and proudly talked about the dummies being specially created on his request, mentioning that their magical defense is way higher compared to the regular dummies sold on the market. Fabian told Son Hyuk that there is no need to worry about destroying the Iron Scarecrows since he's just a beginner, while Son Hyuk thought that he actually needed to destroy them in order to complete a quest. Son Hyuk turns towards the Scarecrows and casts a poison fog without casting time to Fabian's surprise. The fog starts spreading and slowly melts the scarecrows. Son Hyuk then uses a poison spear and destroys one of the scarecrows and Fabian just stands behind him in disbelief. Meanwhile on the other side of the city, the Solitude Guild leader Kepam and Doko Guild commander had a walk and talked about some kind of a grand plan that would happen in their current tourist city Herdin. Kepam's plan was to make his guild become a representative guild in Herdin city by secretly causing a big problem and then solving the problem on his own. He needed some help to cause the mess and he knew exactly who to talk to. Doko, guild commander, praised Kepam and then they parted their ways. Kepam checked the list of some of the other guild's members and found a guy named Loken. 
Loken was a member of the Devil Guild and Capem offered him to do some PKing in exchange for gold. Loken told him that if he does that then he won't be able to use Herdin anymore and that would be a disaster. Capem then offered him a large amount of gold and Loken told him he would talk to his people and make a final decision. Capem waited in the office while Loken talked to his people and explained that Capem made a guild named Solitude and is aiming for the representative guild's position. One of the guys listening to Loken told him that it's crazy to think that a newly created guild could become the representative guild, but Loken explained Capem's plan. He said that all they had to do was kill some player at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning and then Capem would save the city by hunting down the PKs. When that happens, Capem would kill one of person that PK'd and that person would be himself, Lokem, and the rest would escape. Lokem then encouraged his guild members by explaining that it's worth because they'd get 200,000 gold for doing so and ask them if they agree. Lokem entered the office and told Capem that they would take the money and do as he requested. They shook hands and Capem reminded him of what he has to do tomorrow morning. Now we see Son Hyuk's parents discussing their holiday's departure time. Son Hyuk told them they could go first since he won't be able to go to Herdin City yet and asked where they had logged out their characters. His mother said her character was near the warp gate in front of a restaurant, saying it's a beautiful place, but not knowing that the mass PKing will happen exactly there. Son Hyuk said he'll see them at the restaurant and went to his room to log in into Pangea. He logged in and told the NPC to take him to Urdan. He went to Urdan and as he walked down the street, he overheard a conversation of two people talking about some kind of mess happening in Herdin at the moment. People talked about the Devil's Guild Loken group PKing around the warp gate, saying that they're only killing beginners. Another person said that the Devil's Guild is quite powerful and not even NPC guards could stop them. Knowing that his parents are beginners and in great danger, Son Hyuk quickly travels to Herdin and hopes his parents are still alive. He quickly walked down the street through crowds of scared and nervous people, but as he walked past them, some of the people got shot by arrows. He finally found the restaurant his mother talked about and opened the door just to see a bunch of dead people on the floor. He carefully looked around trying to find his parents and when he did, they were already dead. Oh no, these guys are in for a trouble now. Son Hyuk realized that there is no need to be scared on hide and revenge was the only way to deal with such terrible players. Son Hyuk turned back and saw one of the players shooting arrows at citizens. Son Hyuk fires a fire spell at him and a message appears saying that he is now in a hostile state with the user he attacked. Then another message appeared and said that the user he shot at has a high crime rate and Son Hyuk's crime rate would not rise, meaning there's no penalty for him to kill this player. The player did not die immediately, so Son Hyuk casted a poison spear spell and killed the opponent. Loken and his friends were surprised to see the Mandara guy die in only two hits, thinking the guy who killed him was probably a special player. Son Hyuk then attacked them too, killing Loken's friend Hayden in one hit. Loken dodges Son Hyuk's next attack, but Son Hyuk manages to hit him with the next one. Loken couldn't believe anyone would be brave enough to attack him or his guild members because they would be able to kill him without getting a penalty. Son Hyuk just stood there and calmly fired a poison spear, killing Loken at spot. Some of the survivors suddenly started talking about Son Hyuk's skills and abilities to single-handedly destroy Loken's group. Son Hyuk didn't care about their comments and just logged out of the game, angry because his family's vacation was ruined. Meanwhile, Loken's members exchanged some messages and discussed their sudden deaths and defeat. Hayden and Mandara were surprised that a solo player with no backup destroyed them in seconds. Hayden wondered if Son Hyuk even knew about their guild, thinking it would be very scary if he did know about it and still attack them. Loken complained about Capcom calling him and telling him to attack the players again after their penalties were over. Capcom also told him that he'll find the guy who killed him and his friends and handle it through his guild. Mandara and Hayden continued talking about finding Son Hyuk and attacking him as a team. 
Son Hyuk entered the living room and started apologizing to his parents because he couldn't arrive earlier to save them, but they told him there was no need to apologize since he couldn't do anything and they were the bad guys so it could have happened to anyone at any time. Son Hyuk walked back to his room wondering if they've done the PKing just for fun. He decided to call Kim and ask him if he knew anything about the guilt devil. Kim said that he knew who they were and Son Hyuk told him about the massacre that happened earlier that day. Kim got surprised and angry hearing the news and told Son Hyuk to find a guild as soon as possible. Son Hyuk asked why such a hurry and Kim explained that there is a rule in the devil guild where they hunt down players who kill their guild members even if their guild members did something wrong and since this was the case with Son Hyuk he needed to find protection in joining a guild as soon as possible. Son Hyuk thought their policy was dumb and they should actually apologize and not avenge their criminals criminal comrades. Kim offered him to join his guild since it had a good reputation and they couldn't attack him anytime they wanted, as they would if Son Hyuk was a solo player. Son Hyuk calmly refused, saying he doesn't want to cause any problems to Kim. Kim showed concern and asked Son Hyuk if he had any other plan then, but Son Hyuk replied saying he had nothing planned yet and just asked him if he knew where the Devil's Guild's base is. Kim told Son Hyuk about their location and jokingly said he should go there and destroy everyone. Son Hyuk just thanked him for the info about their location but Kim yelled saying he was just joking and advised him to not go there and fight with the whole guild because winning like that would be impossible. Son Hyuk said that if he managed to kill their strongest players then it should be easy dealing with other weaker players and mentioned that he already has a good plan. Kim yelled at him saying that a moment ago he didn't have any plans but Son Hyuk said he just thought of it and they'll talk later. At that moment Kim realized that they really made Son Hyuk angry. The devil guild leader Bal sat in his office reading a book and talked to his subordinates about Son Hyuk's killing of their guild members. The subordinates couldn't believe all three of them died by a mere magician but Bal convinced him that was the case. The subordinate mentioned that Mandara was even called the magician killer and it's crazy to think he died in just two hits. Bal then tells his subordinate to ask Rhino about the incident since he's the poison tower's branch manager therefore he definitely know more about it and orders him to send their best guy to Herden City. Meanwhile, Son Hyuk sat in front of his computer and investigated more about the Devil Guild. He found out that if someone would harm their guild member, that person would be killed at least 5 times. Son Hyuk then thinks to himself that when the vacation finally ends, he'd show them what a real devil is like. The news about Son Hyuk's killings finally arrived at the Poison Tower Hard Rock branch, but Rhino says it's his first time hearing that name and asks Bal subordinate about the reason for looking for this guy. The subordinate contemplates telling him the truth, but then finally tells him that three of their guild members were attacked by Son Hyuk. The branch manager Rhino asks him if they're going to take revenge and the subordinate says they'll ask him to apologize first thinking to himself that Son Hyuk will be killed even if he apologizes. Rhino promised to help but said it would take some time to find the guy he's looking for. He then gives Rhino the money Bal sent as a bribe and they part their ways. The vacation day finally came and Son Hyuk's family decided to enter Pangaea again. His mother was curious whether the attack would happen again and Son Hyuk told her to wait a moment until he checks it out. Son Hyuk logged into the game and saw those guys killing beginners and newbies in the streets again. The devil guild members carefully waited for everyone's penalty to end and logged in the game when the number of online players peaked. Son Hyuk wondered if he should kill them again but decided to be more careful this time checking out the streets. A symbol of a player's guild always showed up above their heads and Son Hyuk saw many devil guilds members in the streets. He realized that they must be looking for him and decided to be passive this time to avoid attacking them. He saw Locum and his friends kill a bunch of players and thought it would be inhumane if he ignored all the killings and ran away. As he approached the Devil Guild members, he saw a couple of Solitude Guild members running towards Locum. Locum allows Capum to hit and kill him, 
just as they agreed, but people on the streets kind of realize that the fight looks a bit staged. Suddenly, the streets were empty and the fighters from the Devil Guild were nowhere to be seen. Sonhyuk thought that the situation was very suspicious and decided to kill Hayden and see what would happen. As he killed Hayden easily, the supposed savior of Solitude Guild panicked and became very angry, wanting to catch the killer. At that moment, Sonhyuk realized that they didn't come to save anyone, but it was all a plot. It was obvious that the massacre was planned by the Solitude Guild, since they would appear to be heroes in the end. Sonhyuk started thinking that one of the reasons for it might be to gain popularity among the citizens and the government, but quickly realized that it could not be the case since they are already quite famous. Meanwhile, the people already started talking about the Solitude Guild being awesome for saving them, hoping for it to become the representative guild just as Capon planned. Since the first reaction of common folk was their support of Solitude Guild becoming the representative one, Sonhyuk realized that exactly that must be their real motive. The next day, Rhino visited Poison Tower's first rank mage Rupert. Rupert greeted Rhino and reminded him that he hasn't visited him in a long time. Rhino then proceeded with his plan and said he had one question to ask. Rupert felt a bit disappointed, realizing he was not the reason for Rhino's visit and asked Rhino about the question he wanted to ask. Rhino told Rupert that there was a mage who attacked one of his friends, but Rupert asked him if he was sure about that. He answered that he wasn't sure since he just found out about the incident, but the guys who reported this said that he wore a poison tower robe, implying that he must be one of Rupert's magicians. Rupert felt insulted and asked Rhino to reveal his name immediately and he would find him right away. Rhino told him that the attacker's name was Son Hyuk, but Rupert asked him if he was sure again. He answered saying he was sure and asked Rupert whether he knew him or not. Rupert said that of course he knew him, so Rhino requested him to schedule a meeting with Son Hyuk, but Rupert wanted to explain to him who Son Hyuk is, saying that he's the next tower master. Meanwhile, Son Hyuk's parents enjoyed their holiday vacation on the seaside. Son Hyuk accompanied his parents in order to protect them from the PKs. As they walked on the beach, Son Hyuk's father noticed a devil guilt's mark above one of the people in the crowd and Son Hyuk's mother said his mark looked similar to the people who killed them earlier when they first logged on to have their vacation. Son Hyuk started wondering why there was so many Devil Guild members all around the city and thought it was a relief that Hayden and Lokem were not at the beach. Son Hyuk told his parents that he'll go buy some food and they should just wait for him. They proposed going with him but Son Hyuk said that the place is a bit far and his father said he'll message him there location a bit later. Instead of buying food, Son Hyuk went to a shop and requested buying a mask that everyone was wearing in the city. The NPC clerk gladly sold him a Scarlet Fox mask which cost only 5 gold. Son Hyuk then ran to the TP NPC and told her to take him to Herdin city. He arrived at Herdin and saw some devil guild members on the street and he then walked to their guild house and used his poison fog spell to attack the first group of people he saw. He damaged some of them with the poison fog and as people in the back started objecting and insulting him, he casted the hellfire at them and set them on fire. Then he used all of his spells and obliterated all of them. Some of their colleagues tried attacking Son Hyuk from the back, but he easily killed them too, sending them to their guild house where they usually respawn after dying. Then he just took off his mask and started whistling as if he enjoyed the killing, thinking maybe he should have killed everyone in their guild. Son Hyuk decided to finally buy some food and head to his parents. Bal's subordinate reported that Rhino doesn't know a thing about Son Hyuk and said that he believes Rhino is not telling the truth and just pretending not to know. Suddenly, Bal received a message stating that Son Hyuk just showed up at their guild and started attacking everyone. Bal started worrying and both of them went to the guild house. As they arrived, they saw a large number of bodies on the floor. 
before. Baldan immediately ordered his subordinate to call everyone in Herdin for a gathering. Son Hyuk sat at the dinner table with his parents and asked them about their vacation time. They told him it was great since they didn't need to prepare anything like they do in real life. Son Hyuk agreed but thought to himself that it would be way better if the Devil Guild wasn't there at all. He then told them he'll go to his room and so he did. Son Hyuk logged to Pangea and appeared at the beach, the place where he last logged out after finishing the holiday vacation with his parents. It was a starry night and people enjoyed the view, but Son Hyuk was thinking about something else. He went to the city with his mask on in order to hide his identity and started listening to people in the streets in attempt to hear new rumors. The people still talked about the Solitude Guild becoming the representative guild and Son Hyuk started believing that they really would succeed in doing so. Suddenly, one person said that the massacre might have been staged and Son Hyuk wondered what his next step would be if it really was staged by the Solitude and the Devil Guilds. Thinking of attacking and killing more people, Son Hyuk realized his crime rate would rise as well. He arrives at the teleportation site and requests the NPC to take him to Herdin. He arrives there and attacks a group of people with the poison fog. They recognize him and panic, but Son Hyuk keeps doing his thing and fires all of his spells at them and then dips. They try chasing him, but unsuccessfully. Son Hyuk takes off his mask and thinks about doing the same thing for a month. Bell's subordinate came to him, complaining about Son Hyuk's attacks, cursing his name and telling Bell that it's been 10 days since they tried catching him and there were still no results. He then continued saying that if they waited for too long, they'll suffer even more losses and that more and more people started wearing those silly masks because of him. Bell told him that he wants to catch him, but it's kind of impossible doing it right now since they know nothing about him yet. Bell then tells him that it would be best if they hire rankers to catch him. At that moment the poison fog starts spreading and Bell notices that Son Hyuk came and attacked them again. He calls Son Hyuk to come out and fight him, but Son Hyuk just runs away. The subordinate tries catching him, but Son Hyuk runs behind the wall and disappears. As he takes off his mask, he realizes that just as he casted his spells, a magic square appeared underneath him. The magic square's purpose was to stop the enemy's spells or catch the enemy if possible. Because of the magical squares, Son Hyuk had to change his plan immediately. He then decided to go to the library and as he walked down the street, Kim messaged him and asked if he's going to join the guild anytime soon. Son Hyuk told him to wait a bit more because he's still dealing with the Devil Guild. Kim asks him if he's going to finish his business with the Devil Guild soon and Son Hyuk tells him that at first he wanted to do it for a month but now he'll end the fighting sooner than planned and Kim tells him to inform him when he's done with that. They continue talking and Kim asks him about a number of books in the library he needs to finish reading. Son Hyuk tells him it would take about a week to finish reading and Kim asks about his plans after that. Without hesitation, Son Hyuk tells him he'll go to Hard Rock. Kim asked him another question, wondering about his plans with the Devil Guild and Son Hyuk answered saying there's no need to worry because he'll continue abusing them. He tells Kim they'll talk later because he'll be reading now and Kim tells him to contact him if something new comes up. Meanwhile the devs discuss Son Hyuk and a guy named King of Hunting. Dev Yol asked his friend if Son Hyuk attacked the Devil Guild and the other Dev said that he did since he was really mad about it. They realized that Son Hyuk's father and mother were killed so it's quite normal for him to be pissed. The Dev then said that Son Hyuk is almost done conquering the library tower and both of them start wondering if he'll look for another library. Son Hyuk finished reading all of the books and handed the last two of them to the librarian. Son Hyuk let out a sigh of relief and decided to visit the Devil Guild, but this time just for a talk. As he arrived, one of the guild members saw him and got scared, but reassured him he came in peace and just wanted to talk to the guild leader. 
Meanwhile, Bal was thinking how they haven't made any progress regarding Son Hyuk, which resulted in many members leaving the guild. Bal then hears a knock on the door and someone says that Son Hyuk came and wants to talk to him. Bal lets Son Hyuk in and they sat across from each other. Son Hyuk tells him that the reason for his attacks was the fact that his parents were killed. Bal then gets angry at himself for not knowing this information earlier, since it would be way easier to approach Son Hyuk, knowing he's not a lunatic who attacks anyone he sees for no reason. Son Hyuk then asks Bal to tell him more about the person who planned the massacre. Son Hyuk questions shocked Bal because it was quite surprising that Son Hyuk knew the massacre was a setup. Bal then asks Son Hyuk to tell him more about himself and what he would do after finding out the name of the massacre's organizer. Son Hyuk coldly tells him that his future plans depend on who the organizer is. Bal tells Son Hyuk that if he tells him about the organizer, then many problems for his guild would arise. Son Hyuk interrupted him and said that if he doesn't want to help, he'll just find someone else who's willing to help him. Hearing those words made Bal nervous, so he finally agreed to tell him the truth. They finished their conversation and Son Hyuk called Kim to tell him about it. Kim couldn't believe it and thought that those guys were just crazy and Son Hyuk asked him why he thought so and Kim explained that the trouble he had with the Dako guild was started by the Solitude guild members and Son Hyuk asked if he's going to attack the Solitude guild members. Son Hyuk said that he's not going to fight them but improve his skill first and attack them later and the main reason being the harm they've done to Son Hyuk's parents. Kim then told Son Hyuk to let him know if he can help and they ended the conversation. Son Hyuk went to the library and thought it's a shame he read all of the books in two days only. My man is wild. Meanwhile, the devs talked about Son Hyuk conquering the Magic Tower library. As of that day, Son Hyuk acquired two libraries in Pangaea and the Magic Tower library conqueror title, which increased his wisdom stat by 100 points. He also gained a passive ability that enabled him to get experience points after reading a book and he wondered how much XP that would be. Son Hyuk arrived at the Hard Rock City and found out that he needed to get an S or at least A grade to enter the Hard Rock library. He checked in the Hard Rock's mercenary office and requested to see the list of commissions. After seeing the list, he chose to do a quest where he needed to help an alchemist named Korra. He took a walk in the streets of Hard Rock and realized that the NPCs were selling and buying armors and other items. He helped the alchemist Korra and received the mercenary plaque and the commission reward. Son Hyuk proudly looked at the plaque and felt like a real mercenary. Son Hyuk opened the commission reward and found 5 special potions, one of them enabling him to have full HP and mana for 20 minutes. Son Hyuk checked the stats and got shocked seeing the increase in skill points. Son Hyuk came back to the mercenary office as he wanted to complete another quest. He checked the list and chose the orc tribe exploration quest. All he had to do for the quest was kill 200 orcs. He went to the orcs hunting place, killed them in quick fashion and completed the quest. There were players all over the place looking for hunting teammates and some of them noticed Son Hyuk, wondering how he could come to their hunting place with his weak poison magic, not knowing Son Hyuk's real strengths. Not wanting to join a hunting party, he just passed by them. Suddenly, a beautiful blonde girl appeared in front of him. She greeted him and asked if he remembered her, and he said yes just to be polite, having no idea who she was. The girl smiled and realized he actually didn't remember who she was, and reminded him about their encounter in Orange Library. Son Hyuk suddenly remembered her, and both of them rejoiced. She asked him if he came there to hunt orcs, and whether he'd like to join her team. He looked at her and her team, and contemplated whether he should join them or not. Now after getting asked to join the party, Son Hyuk scratched his head and in the end nervously declined the offer. The excitement the girl showed seconds ago disappeared and she told him it's fine and they'll see each other the next time. As she walked away, her group members asked her whether she really knew the guy or not. 
Son Hyuk felt relieved getting rid of the crowd since he really hated hanging out with a bunch of people. He then headed uphill and as he climbed he realized there were only people and no orcs nearby. As he walked further a group of orcs appeared in front of him. Son Hyuk fired all of his spells in order to kill them as soon as possible and finish the orc tribe exploration quest. Then he walked back to the Hard Rock's mercenary office and requested the mercenary plaque. The NPC gave him the plaque and thought he'd have to keep an eye on Son Hyuk since he killed 200 orcs in just an hour. Son Hyuk kept requesting new tasks and finishing all of them in under. A scouter from the Koma guild noticed Son Hyuk's skills and saw him holding a map in his hands thinking that having a map is not usual for players doing these simple tasks. The scouter then decided to follow Son Hyuk in order to offer him a guild sign up. The next quest that Son Hyuk started was the annihilation of the orc tribe where he had to kill 500 orcs and their chief. Son Hyuk held the map in his hands and walked towards the orcs location casually killing every orc who tried to attack him. Suddenly he heard some rustle behind the tree where the scouter hid. Son Hyuk turned around wondering if he should check the rustle but then he decided to move on and complete the annihilation quest. As soon as Son Hyuk came close to orcs habitat they started marching towards him. Son Hyuk fired a magic missile at one of them and realized he was a regular orc and not a havoc orc since havoc orcs are the one he had to kill to complete the quest. Regardless, he decided to kill all of them to gain some experience points and level up. As Son Hyuk continued killing orcs, a massive and scary chief of the Sun Orc tribe suddenly appeared. The chief orc started grunting and intimidating him, but Son Hyuk just fired a poison fog and the chief orc died instantly. The one shot surprised Son Hyuk too and the scout watched him eliminate the chief orc in surprise. The scout wondered how the poison storm could be that powerful. Then Son Hyuk took out the map and the scout thought he'd probably came to the wrong orc's tribe, so he'll have to follow him some more and finally make his offer to join the guild. A couple of minutes later Son Hyuk finally found the Havoc Orc tribe. He killed the orcs with ease but as he fired his AoE spells at the chief orc a message appeared and said he's in a hostile state with a username Loa meaning he killed a player accidentally. Son Hyuk thought that the Loa guy was probably hiding and he went looking for him. He found the guy lying on the floor and quickly checked if he was one of the devil guild members. And there he is, the scout guy that was following him, but Son Hyuk didn't know who he was. He checked if the scout Loa had any items on him and found the hard rock secret underground map. Meanwhile Loa exited the Pangea game and realized that the guy who killed him was Son Hyuk. He then sat in front of his computer and started googling about Son Hyuk to confirm if he really was the devil guild killer. Loa knew it would not be possible to anonymously approach Son Hyuk and offer him to join the guild since he already knew his name. The next day Loa logged in the game and checked his inventory seeing no hard rock secret underground map. While checking his inventory Gilma appeared behind him and asked him what he was doing in the Koma guild house and whether he had died. Loa answered saying he wanted to look around since he hasn't been there in a while but Gilma asked him again if he died. Loa said he did and that he has good and bad news about his death. Gilma then said he wanted to hear the bad news first. Loa told him he lost the map when he died but Gilma said it's not a big deal. After consoling Loa he asks him whether he died by PKs or monsters and Loa answered that he followed a guy and got caught up in the spell range he casted and died. But the good news is that the guy who killed him was Son Hyuk, the guy Gilma was looking for. Gilma thought that finding Son Hyuk was a good thing but on the other hand he might be offended because Loa followed him. Loa told Gilma that they might get the map back if they wait in the mercenary office because that's the place Son Hyuk visits very often. Gilma agreed and told him they should go to the mercenary office right away and apologize to Son Hyuk for following him. 
Son Hyuk was indeed in the mercenary office, reporting back another quest he finished and promoting to the grade C, hoping to get to grade A and finally be able to enter the Hard Rocks library. A few seconds later, Loa and Gilma arrive and Son Hyuk recognizes Loa's face. They make eye contact and Son Hyuk gets ready for a fight, thinking that Loa came back to get revenge. Surprisingly, Loa bows his head and then approaches him with Gilma. Gilma started speaking first and introduced himself, saying he's the guild leader of Koma Guild and asks Son Hyuk if he had a minute to spare. Son Hyuk nervously asked Gilma what it was about and Gilma apologized for Loa's weird behavior. Loa then apologized personally too and Son Hyuk realizes that he's been following him yesterday. Gilma then starts fanboying and surprises Son Hyuk because a moment ago he thought they'd attack him and now they're talking about admiring him a lot. Gilma explains that he loves what he did with the Devil Guild a few days ago and asks him if they could be friends. Son Hyuk felt pressed by another offer for friendship, wondering what to say without offending anyone. In the end, they agreed to become friends and Son Hyuk accepted their friend requests so they could send private messages to each other. Gilma and Loa exit the mercenary's office and Gilma tells him that he's only at level 110, but Loa finds it difficult to believe since he's been wiping out the enemy guild members effortlessly. Two of them then talk about getting to the underground waterways, the place where Koma Guild elites were wiped out by the enemies, with Son Hyuk's help. Gilma said it would be possible, but Son Hyuk might just reject the request and since they've just met and had a good talk, maybe it would be best if they asked him immediately. Gilma then asked Son Hyuk to help them, but Son Hyuk said he's sor sorry, sorry, Son Hyuk said he's sorry since he'd be doing something else. Bros, <laughs> sorry, my pronunciation is getting a little bit off. I'm a little bit tired today, last night I had a sparring session, I'm, I'm training BJJ and I got really really tired today so my pronunciation might be a little bit off today, I'm sorry about that, I hope you understand, I know you understand because you bros are awesome. Sorry for the distraction, let's go back to the story. Uh, Gilma apologized for interruption and said he could contact him if he found some time later and Son Hyuk said yeah and told him to enjoy playing the game. Son Hyuk thought that they didn't know each other very well and the best thing would be be focusing on getting the A grade. The next quest Son Hyuk was on requested him to visit Roman and solve one of his problems. He came to Roman's house and greeted the guard asking for Roman's whereabouts and the guard told him to wait for Roman in one of the rooms inside. Son Hyuk sat and waited and Roman finally arrived. Roman gave Son Hyuk a piece of paper and told him to come into his room to tell him a story. After telling the story, Roman asked him to do two things for him, and Son Hyuk hated the fact that he had to do two different things to complete one quest. Roman gave him a parchment to deliver to a person named Ketan, who lives in Kamein Mountains, and then told him to take a red bead from him and bring it back. Son Hyuk felt relieved because the two things he needed to do could be done exactly one after another. Son Hyuk walked to Ketan's house and noticed that the house doors were smashed. He enters Ketan's house and saw him lying dead on the floor. A few hours before Son Hyuk arrived, Ketan held the red bead in his hand and heard a loud knock on his door. He could hear a group of people talk about breaking down the door and entering the house, so he slid the red bead through a wooden crack in the wall of his house. The intruders entered his house and asked about the red bead, which was the key to the secret cave of the Great Kelta. Ketan said he had no idea what they were talking about, so they stabbed him with a knife. The men kept searching the house and Ketan wished Roman could avenge his death. Son Hyuk's quest log updated and he received a message instructing him to go back to Roman and tell him the sad news about Ketan. Then the quest was updated and now he needed to find 
the red bead somewhere in Catan's house. The quest reward was getting the key to the Great Kelta, which is supposed to be used to find a secret treasure cave, and Sonhyuk started wondering whether Roman knew anything about the Kelta guy. So Sonhyuk entered the house and started looking for the red bead. Suddenly, he saw a shiny part of the wooden wall and touched it, so the wall opened and he found the red bead and a letter. As he took the letter and the bead, he thought about going to the cave immediately, but the location of the cave was not listed just yet as he expected. In the end, he had to go back to Roman and ask him about the red marble. Roman read the letter and decided to find the killers. Then he asked Son Hyuk whether he found the marble or not, and Son Hyuk handed it to Roman immediately. Son Hyuk left Roman's house, but forgot to ask him about the cave. A few moments later, Roman hears a knock on his door and allows the person to enter. The head leader Heron entered the room and told Roman that the chief, who was at his deathbed, wanted to talk to him. Roman was surprised but happy the chief got better and decided to visit him. Heron told him to visit the chief in 30 minutes and not tell anyone about it. Roman walked to chief's room wondering if he really got better since not even the best wizards and priests could heal him. He saw the chief's wife Anna at the entrance of the room and greeted her politely. She told him to enter the room since the chief is waiting for him. Roman entered the room and saw Chief in the same condition as before. As he turned to Anna to ask what's going on, she started screaming as if somebody's attacking her. He knew this was some kind of a trap and quickly exited the room, but Heron stood outside the room and started accusing him of attacking the poor lady Anna. Roman couldn't believe that Heron set him up and wondered what would happen next to him. Meanwhile, Son Hyuk was on his next quest, trying to find a monster con and collect the flower of life called the Helid that grows on Konda's back. Konda monster looked like a turtle and each one had the Helid flower on its back, so the quest shouldn't be difficult to complete. Son Yuk used the poison storm and killed 20 of them at the same time and collected the flowers. He took a walk and noticed a house in the distance. He came close and saw a person exiting the house. They stared at each other for a moment and the person asked Son Hyuk who he was. Son Hyuk tried to act chill and said he came there accidentally while doing a quest but would be leaving immediately. The host then told Son Hyuk to stop and asked him if he was a mercenary. Son Hyuk said he is and the person asked him if he would be able to take on another quest. Son Hyuk refused, saying he only wants to do quests from the mercenary office. The guy started begging, saying it's a very simple quest and all he had to do is deliver a letter to his friend Roman, who is the group leader of the Copin Corps in Hard Rock, promising him 10 gold as a reward. Son Hyuk wondered what kind of relationship Roman and this guy had and accepted the quest. Son Hyuk took the letter and this guy, Hackid, thanked him, saying that Roman will give him the reward. Son Hyuk looked at him with a smile on his face and said it's not a big deal since he'll be going there anyways and Roman is his friend already. Hackid was happy to learn that Son Hyuk and Roman are friends and Son Hyuk explains that the quest he's doing right now is given to him by Roman. Hackid asked him what kind of quest it was and Son Hyuk said that he had to deliver a letter to someone called Ketan. Hackid knew Ketan and asked Son Hyuk if Ketan was doing well. Son Hyuk didn't want to tell him about Ketan's death and luckily some people approached them at that moment. The guys who approached them were the same guys who killed Ketan. They looked at the guys and Son Hyuk noticed they had the devil's guild mark above their heads, so he asked Hackid if he knew them. Hackid said he never saw them before and the guys started talking about killing Hackid and Son Hyuk. One of them loudly said that he already killed a guy at the first peak, so Son Hyuk made a conclusion that he must be the one who entered Ketan's house and killed him with a knife. Ketan's killer, named Ghost, attacks Son Hyuk throwing a knife at him, 
but Sonyuk's passive saves him and the poison knife bounces back and falls on the ground. Both of them found the situation rather weird since they never failed to kill someone with a knife before. Then they realize that they just attacked Son Hyuk and quickly change their story, asking Son Hyuk to talk to them for a moment since they know the death is coming for them now. How the turns have tabled. Meanwhile, Bell was happily browsing through many guild membership requests that people kept sending, thinking that having new members would undo the damage done by Son Hyuk. He then received a message by Ghost saying that they have a big problem with the coping corpse job. Bell asked them what kind of a problem and Ghost said that they've just encountered Son Hyuk. Bell gets concerned and asks if they encountered bros. <laughs> Bro, I'm so sorry. I'm bur I can even edit this out, but I want to leave it for you guys, for you bros, so you know the struggles I go through to make. I'm joking. I'm not struggling with making these videos. I'm having so much fun, especially now this manhwa is getting really, really interesting. So back to the story. Okay, now, now my dog is interrupting, but I'm happy he's interrupting. He's been a little bit depressed last two days. I don't know why, but I'm happy to hear him barking again. Okay, now I think we can finally go back to the story after a couple of minutes of listening to my dog bark. <laughs> so, Bal was getting concerned and he asked Ghost if they encounter the real Son Hyuk, but Ghost answers that they cannot be sure since the user isn't wearing a mask, but he's using magic from the poison tower. Bal gets angry and wonders why of all days it had to happen today and then asks Ghost about their exact location. Ghost explained that Son Hyuk was with the NPC Hackett that they had to kill at the 7th peak, which was their last destination and asked Bell what they should do next. Bell told him to stay still and wait for his arrival, wondering what kind of quest would take Son Hyuk to the seventh peak, guessing the red bead quest might be the one. Bell arrives and they finally meet each other. Son Hyuk jokes saying it's been a while since they last met, but Bell thinks Son Hyuk is serious and answers saying, well I guess three days are quite a while, not wanting to disagree with Son Hyuk in any way possible. Son Hyuk then asked Bell about the quest he received and the NPC that requested it and how much he knew about Kelta. Bell then asked him if he really wanted to find out about it and Son Hyuk said he really did want to find out about it. Bell gets uncomfortable and starts telling a long story, but Son Hyuk starts thinking that just finding out about the cave's location would have been enough. Fast forward, Son Hyuk arrives at Romance's house and tells the guard NPC to let him in since he's got a letter to deliver. The guard asked him if he really needed to deliver the letter directly to Roman, and after Son Hyuk said he did, the guard told him to wait a minute. Son Hyuk waited for some time and instead of Roman, Heron arrived. Heron introduced himself as the head of the group, but Son Hyuk recognized him as the NPC who killed Roman's companions. Son Hyuk thought that Heron might have killed Roman too. Heron then requested Son Hyuk to give him the letter since Roman is quite busy. Son Hyuk tells the NPC that he doesn't want to give the letter to him and he'll come back later. Heron then told Son Hyuk to schedule an appointment right now so he could contact Roman and the two of them could finally meet. Son Hyuk asked him to tell him the exact time Roman's arrival and Heron told him he'll be back by around 10 pm. Later that day, Bal had a meeting with Heron and was requested to catch a mercenary that would come to visit them at 10 pm that night. Not knowing that the person he needed to catch was Son Hyuk, Bal happily asked Heron about the number of people they need to catch the guy. Heron, happy with Bal's courage and determination, tells him that three people would be enough to catch the mercenary. Bros. <laughs> Bell is so over in over his head. Yeah, that's the right phrase. So bros, that's all for today's video. If you want to find out how will Bell feel after he realizes he needs to catch Son Hyuk, please subscribe with the bell notifications turned on. Please like the video, bros. Tell me something down in the comments. I love reading your comments. A lot of you guys have been telling me that I need to take a break because I might burn myself out. But honestly, I'm really, really 100% honest when I tell you this. Your comments really give me energy, more energy to make these videos as well. So please talk to me, bros. Have a great day and peace.